from KSEC 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this hour, Mayor Ron Nierberg responding after San Antonio police used non-lethal projectiles on protesters. A fresh night of protests as the president faces backlash for his handling of the crisis. I'm Inez de la Quatera in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. Taking a look outside at live cam. Looks a little hazy out there, but I maybe some sunshine in our future. Mike's forecast is next. Yeah, it looks like we're definitely socked in with some morning cloud cover. And good morning to you, everyone. It is Wednesday. It is June 3rd, and we want to go right to Officer Marcus Trujillo right now, get an update on anything that might uh, steer, you need to steer clear of this morning, traffic-wise. Marcus. Uh, good morning, and we do, Mark, uh, the, for the folks that are headed outbound. That's going to be an issue this morning. Now, I remember yesterday uh, we had that uh, traffic jam uh, pretty much the rest of the morning, uh, I-10 westbound, as you see there at Dominion. Everything close as we back up there. I-10 and Hoyerman, you can see they're starting to funnel everybody onto one lane, but eventually uh, before you get to uh, Bernie Stage Road, everybody must exit the highway. So the highway is closed for construction. So those signs are up. So that's going to cause a little bit of slowdown for all the westbound traffic. Now there are a number of tractor trailers that do use that route. So just get ready for some delays if you head in that direction. 410 in Pyramidal, no problems there. And 410 in Callahan, so far looking pretty good there. Mike. So let's see, thank you, sir. The, all that uh, kind of mist and haze kind of hanging there in the uh, in the air because the humidity is really high this morning. Yeah, and we had those scattered showers and a few thunderstorms around yesterday. They kind of lingered, didn't they? Yes, if you got caught underneath one, it was coming down gangbusters, but then you look at the big picture and they were just very few and far between. Well, there's that, and of course, you're keeping eyes still on the Gulf, and that storm is not playing, is it? No, it, it has become an officially uh, named storm, a tropical storm, Cristobal, and uh, it's now looking, though, it's more and more like like it's going to be more to the east uh, over towards, say, Louisiana area. We'll talk more about that in longer weather. First of all, yeah, it is very humid out there. You can just sort of see that haze off there in the distance. We do have a little bit of fog to deal with. Stinson, seven miles, eight Randolph, New Braunfels. So not bad. And it's one of those situations where obviously it can get worse in the next couple of hours. But then you go further down to the southeast Beeville, zero visibility right now three miles at Victoria. So it's, it's one of those situations where it's going to just kind of fluctuate a little bit. Remember at one point yesterday, New Braunfels was going from like a quarter mile up to a mile and a half and then back down again. So we'll have to watch for that. 75 degrees in town, about five above normal. Everybody is warm and everybody is really humid. We got dew points well up into the 70s right now. This is midsummer kind of humidity out there. Mold is on the high side, a little bit of grass. We are going to be seeing more sunshine today. Get us up to 90. Still going to be a couple of those showers, maybe a stray thunderstorm here or there. Again, few and far between. If you get underneath one, you know, decent downpours. And then after that, get ready. It is going to get hot the next few days, especially by the first part of next week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Mark. I thank you. New this morning, San Antonio Mayor Ron Nierenberg is questioning police use of projectiles on protesters and members of the media at the Alamo. For the fourth day, people marched through downtown protesting racial inequality and the police killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis. The demonstrations largely peaceful throughout the day yesterday, but just before 11 last night, a group started to face off with police officers near Alamo Plaza. At one point, officers could be seen opening fire, hitting the crowd with pepper balls, smoke, wooden and rubber balls. Some of those projectiles hit a Spectrum San Antonio reporter and a My SA reporter who both tweeted about the incident. After the news began to spread on social media, Mayor Nierberg responded to a reporter's tweet questioning if he was, quote, okay with police officers shooting members of the media with non-lethal projectiles. Via Twitter, the mayor said, no, I am not. I'm asking for more information on these projectiles, end quote. Several journalists in San Antonio have suffered minor injuries in the four days of protests, including some from KSAT. Meanwhile, the city of San Antonio will continue its nightly closures of Alamo Plaza for the rest of the week. Each night, the area will be closed to vehicles and pedestrians from 8.30 at night to 6 in the morning. The last closure is scheduled for Saturday night into Sunday morning. Police will also increase staffing in the downtown area to mitigate any potential disturbances. Meanwhile, police made another arrest linked to the violence Saturday night. Officers say 21-year-old Nathan Abram Carranza is accused of causing damage to a church on East Travis after throwing rock-like objects at the building. Investigators say more than $3,000 worth of damage was done. 
Caranta was arrested on the south side after investigators found video linking him to the incident. Now faces a third degree felony charge for riot, rioting and criminal mischief involving a church. Because it's a church, the charge could increase to a state jail felony. Police say more arrests could be made as their investigation into Saturday's rioting continues. President Donald Trump has said he was ready to deploy thousands of heavily armed soldiers in cities across the country to disperse the protest. When Governor Greg Abbott was asked if the state would seek that option, the governor had this to say. So we will not be asking the United States military to come into the state of Texas because we know that Texans can take care of Texans. Governor Abbott went on to say, along with the tremendous local police force in cities across the state, there is also an abundance of resources provided by the Texas Department of Public Safety. Meanwhile, it was another night of protests around the nation. This as President Trump faces backlash over his handling of the crisis. ABC's Ines de Locotera is in Washington with the latest. Overnight, the nation seeing a fresh wave of protests, thousands from coast to coast peacefully making their voices heard. We don't want to do anything that's not peaceful. We've been peaceful all day. But in some parts, things once again taking a violent turn. We're both angry. We're just expressing it in different ways. And people will say it's hijacking, but at the same time, it's clear everybody's angry. Near Boston, groups throwing fireworks and water bottles at officers. In New York City, protesters defying the 8 p.m. curfew. Streets in the city's Soho section closed after luxury stores like Chanel and Gucci were vandalized in recent nights. And in Washington, this stunning image, members of the National Guard lining the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. President Trump, meanwhile, now facing backlash from church leaders after he used government forces to remove peaceful protesters from a park so he could be photographed outside a historic church. He is not entitled to use the spiritual symbolism of our sacred spaces. D.C.'s Catholic Archbishop Wilton Gregory also condemning Trump's visit Tuesday to a Catholic shrine, saying it was a publicity stunt and called it baffling and reprehensible. And the president's 2020 opponent piling on. A country is crying out for leadership. Leadership that can recognize pain and deep grief of communities that have had a knee on their neck for a long time. And Biden is now calling on Congress to ban chokeholds, and he's vowing to establish a National Police Oversight Commission if elected. And as Delacuatera, ABC News, Washington. In the meantime, the president is tweeting the Republican National Convention will be looking for another host for its meeting in late August. North Carolina's governor says he isn't planning to ease social distancing guidelines for the convention. Three Republican officials confirmed that President Trump therefore will not accept the nomination in Charlotte. So it looks like the GOP is pulling out of North Carolina. Right now we're at 438, 75 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, we're hearing from the six-year-old daughter of George Floyd for the first time as protests continue across the nation. And next, former President Obama scheduled to give his thoughts on the recent protests in a special live stream later today. Taking a look outside with live cam, it's 75 degrees and ooh, it is muggy out there. My hair is nice and frizzy this morning. <laughs> Mike, we'll let you know about our forecast when we come back. Good morning. Headlines. Former President Barack Obama addressed the recent protests against police violence later today. The former president will participate in the NBK Alliance Town Hall series, be joined by a police reform activists and public figures, including former Attorney General Eric Holder. This will be the 44th president's first on camera comments since the death of George Floyd sparked nationwide protests. The town hall will be live streamed on Obama.org later this evening. Presidential candidate Joe Biden has won the Democratic presidential primary in the District of Columbia. Biden is on the cusp of formally securing the Democratic presidential nomination after winning hundreds more delegates in primary contests so far this week. Biden could lock down the nomination within the next week as West Virginia and Georgia hold primaries. President Trump officially secured the Republican presidential nomination in March. Stocks will start the day right after a big day on Wall Street. All three indices posted gains to close Tuesday. Investors focusing on positive economic reopens across the country rather than the social unrest due to massive protests. The Dow gained nearly 300 points to close at 25,742.
The Nasdaq gained nearly 60 points and the S&P 500 added 25. It's 442, 75 degrees. Still ahead for the first time, we are hearing from the six-year-old daughter of George Floyd and her thoughts on recent events. And next, how a local bakery is getting by just a little better during the pandemic thanks to generous support by community members. Welcome back. This morning, we're hearing from the six-year-old daughter of George Floyd. ABC's Mona Kozar Abdi has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an emotional interview with George Floyd's six-year-old daughter, ABC's Eva Pilgrim, spoke with Gianna Floyd. What do you want people to know? Mm, kind of I miss him. Gianna's mother, Roxy Washington, saying that George loved his daughter. He was always a great dad. I mean, that was his baby. He loved his little girl. Roxy found out about George's death when she got a phone call. She then got on the internet and saw the video. I watched it only for a, a moment. I couldn't believe that somebody was doing him like that because I loved him so much. I wanted to help him. I wish I could have been there to help him. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have live reports from Minnesota and across the country. With your GMA First Look, I'm Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. All across the country, small businesses have been pushed to the brink as they cope with the loss of customers and dollars. One neighborhood bakery on San Antonio's west side knows the struggle well. But Marilyn Moore shows us the bakery got a sweet surprise that gives them hope. The doorbell jingle is a sweet sound for this small west side bakery. It means customers are back for their Mexican pastries. I love it with coffee. Inside Guerrero's bakery, the kitchen is bustling. The air smacks of sugar and gratitude. Business was very slow because no school. For more than two months, stay-at-home orders kept customers away from their usual morning tacos and treats. We haven't been at work, so I hardly ever stop off. So quiet, Karina and Ismael Guerrero wondered if their shop would even make it. We were worried about it, yes, because uh, no customers, uh, no money, uh, no business. Then a customer's Facebook play to rally behind Guerrero's went viral. Skylar Matthews' husband saw it. He said, look, your bakery, and I was like, no, I hope they don't go out of business. They make the best tortillas. <laughs> Old customers and new are now showing up, even lining up. It's important to help small businesses. The boost in business is a testament to the power of community, social media, and a pretty good empanada. Karina says the unexpected support warms their hearts. It's warming their ovens, too. We are grateful, yes. We'll be back. Thank you. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. She'll be back. 448. Let's get an update on time saver traffic. And right now you're taking a look at I-10 at Frio. A little fuzzy to the camera, but uh, I think that's just the autofocus. Uh, probably uh, the alarm hasn't gone off for the autofocus to wake up just yet. <laughs> as we take a look at some other areas, 604 Tradesman, as you can see, a little bit of a uh, haze, a little bit of fuzz out there to those lights, uh, but uh, pretty clear there, 3537. Now the important thing is currently no accidents right now. So we're accident free for the moment, and that's a... Uh, Five second guarantee. Go, Mike, your turn. And, <laughs> up, time's up. Three, two, one. No accidents there. Yeah, so. it's still good. You can extend it just a little bit, perhaps. Okay, extended yeah. 30 seconds. Yeah, uh, I'm not surprised that people got video or pictures of these downpours yesterday. They weren't hard to spot. No, because looking, I was driving up uh, 281 yesterday and then, you know, off to the west, and you could just see those rain mm -hmm. columns all scattered about. And then, you know, you look at the big pictures I was saying on radar, and it was just these little spots here and there, but you got caught yeah. underneath one of these, you know, a good old tropical summer kind of uh, mm -hmm. downpour, and it was coming down. Big drops and I, we I got the, the sun, the sun rain, the devil's rain, where it's like sun's out, but the big heavy drops yep. are just coming down. That's yep. right. And we've got a couple of uh, great rainbow pictures too. <laughs> and you're tracking crystal ball. Yeah, and uh, it's uh, it's looking more promising for us. We'll talk about that in a second. First of all, thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. You may see a couple more of those uh, heavier showers around the area later on today few and far between. A little bit of fog is showing up around the metro area. New Braunfels, some around Kerrville and Beville. You've actually come up a quarter mile. It was at zero visibility, but just watch it, especially to the east and southeast. And we do have hints of it, obviously, out there to the west. Temperatures are very warm, about five above normal right now, four or five above normal. And the 
dew points. Measure moisture in the atmosphere. In 60, you start to feel it. 70, you really feel it. 75, that is just rainforest, tropical, sauna, however you want to describe it, kind of humidity. So going back 12 hours on the uh, satellite radar, and there's those few showers that popped up. Everything was sliding up from uh, southeast to northwest. And yeah, we may see one or two more of those today. And temperatures later on today, we made it to right around the mid upperish 80s. We're going to be upper 80s. I'm going for 90 for a high. Later on today, a little bit warmer there along the uh, Rio Grande Valley and heat index, though, we're going to be dealing with that because we'll still have some humidity around here. So we'll see some heat indices pushing 100 later on this afternoon. Now, as far as computer model, again, one or two of those showers will be popping up later on today, kind of scattered about. Most of us won't see any rain today, but if you do, could be a decent downpour and tomorrow and the next few days, anything that really pops up, I think it's going to be primarily confined down here along the uh, along the coastal plain. Now, going into the next few days, again, this model has a few coastal plain showers hanging around here. Same thing on Saturday. The difference with this long range model, take a look at Sunday. Remember yesterday, it was showing a lot of this rain well over here, covering a good chunk of the eastern portion of the state. Now it's hardly even on this same map. So that's showing that Cristobal is going to be moving a little bit further to the east. So here's what's going on. It is. Uh, it did become officially a tropical storm yesterday, moved into the open waters of the uh, Bay of Campeche. Now it's going to kind of spin around here. It may actually make land a little bit, so lose a little bit of strength and then come back up and it is still forecast to move almost straight to the north but take more of a path to the east of us and even in this configuration it we're still on the the dry side of it if you will the right hand side in relation to the movement of travel is where the heaviest rain would be so that would be from about new orleans off to the east and for us on the dry side you get the sinking air and you really get things to heat up and so that is going to help to heat things up as we go into the first part of next week 83 at noon partly cloudy skies Couple of showers scattered about the area, maybe thunderstorm. Most of us won't see rain, but again, could have a, one of those pretty hefty summer kind of downpours, 90 high temperature, and then we get continually hotter next few days. And we are really not going to be seeing any direct effects from Cristobal, but uh, it's going to be hot. Monday and Tuesday, a lot of computer models. Everything's pretty much in agreement. We're looking at triple digits. It's going to be hot. Yep. I was wondering when we were going to see the. I was like June 1st. It feels so nice outside. It's 5 p.m. Ta-da! <laughs> yep, it's coming. June 6th, 7th, 8th. <laughs> I picked a great that. weekend to hike Enchanted Rock. <laughs> Whew. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 452, 75 degrees. Up next in the wake of protests raging across the country, a popular film about the criminal justice system and its inequalities is now available to watch for free. Let's take a look at your lottery numbers, starting out with pick three, six, seven, nine, fireball eight, daily four, one, five, five, seven, fireball seven. Cash five, 11, 22, 33, 34, 35. And the Texas lottery, Mega Millions, nine, 20, 23, 26, 29, and that Powerball is eight with Mega Player at three. Protests in the wake of the death of George Floyd continue to spark reactions in the entertainment industry. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. You don't know what you're into down here in Alabama when you're guilty from the moment you're born. The film Just Mercy, about the criminal justice system and its inequalities, now available to watch for free. Warner Brothers making the Michael B. Jordan, Jamie Foxx drama available for the month of June in the wake of George Floyd's death and protests raging across the country. A couple of major Canadian artists donating big bucks to the Black Lives Matter movement, The Weeknd giving 500 grand to various organizations, and Drake giving 100K to national bailout. Law and Order creator Dick Wolf has fired a writer on one of his shows who posted on social media that he was ready to quote, light up looters. Craig Gore put up a picture of himself with an assault rifle and the light up comment. Gore was working for Wolf's Law and Order spinoff series, not anymore. Wolf says in a statement, quote, I will not tolerate this conduct, especially during our hour of national grief. I am terminating Craig Gore immediately. And happy birthday today to Anderson Cooper. The CNN news anchor is 53, while actress Imogen Poots is 31. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. About three minutes till 574 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour, protests continue in San Antonio for the fourth straight day. 
We'll have details on some reporters who were hurt when police had to fire non-lethal projectiles into the crowd. Plus, well, happy birthday, Sega, the video game company, releasing a special version of one of its famous consoles. More ahead in your morning Tech Bites. Stick around. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, protests continue downtown here in San Antonio overnight despite curfew orders. Plus, Mayor Ron Nirenberg is responding after non-lethal projectiles hit several local reporters during last night's protest. And we're keeping an eye on a tropical storm in the southern Gulf of Mexico. Where is it headed next? Mike is tracking that. And our local rain chances, good morning to you. We've made it to Wednesday. It is June 3rd. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Let's get an update on what's happening out there. I think we're going to go to traffic before weather. Is that correct? Marcus, yes. you ready? Okay. And and as we take a look, you can see the map void of any incidents, void of any movement also. So uh, there we go, as it tries to catch up. Let me click on this one more time. Let's just see, it looks like the computer thinks it's Monday again. How about we do that? There we go. Now you can see the map is all green. It's, it's still trying to wake up. It, haven't, it hasn't had its coffee yet. But as we move from the map over to TransGuide, you can see not too many issues here in the downtown area. 35, 37 North and Southbound Lane still running smoothly. Now, so far, we've not encountered any dampness on any of the highways. However, remember, we have a limited number of TransGuide cameras, so that's still a, a, that's still a possibility. And also, westbound I-10 at Bernie Sage Road closed for construction right now. Mike? One thing you want to watch out for, uh, well, a couple of leftover damp spots from uh, some of the rain yesterday and a little bit of fog around the area. Temperatures are very warm. We're about uh, three, four or five degrees above the normal low temperature, the average low temperature. And look at that top number. Dew point is up to 72 right now. That's very humid when you get the, those very, very high dew point temperatures well above 70. This is what it looks like as far as some visibility right now. Um, not bad. Hints of fog, a little bit around Kerrville, some around Pleasanton. But then you go down to the uh, southeast and we do have much thicker fog. So Beville has been kind of going back and forth um, just about uh, what 15, 20 minutes ago. It had gone up to a quarter mile. Now it's back down to zero visibility. So we'll be dealing with that, especially in the coastal plain. And some of these numbers, you know, like usually happens, they can change very, very quickly. So just be on the lookout, especially in the next couple of hours, because a lot of times we do get our thickest fog just around the time the sun is starting to come up. So temperatures are well above normal right now. And yeah, <laughs> especially around Port SA, dew point is 74. That is wet towel kind of humidity when you step outside. Mold is on the high side. We will make it up to 90 later on today. Still can see a couple of those showers. Most of us won't see anything, but if you do shower, maybe a thunderstorm. It's going to be those heavy downpours like we had around here yesterday. And then as we head in toward the weekend, things are definitely going to be heating up. And by next week, we are looking at a good chance of hitting first triple digits here in town. Details on that and the latest on Cristobal coming up in just a couple of minutes. Mark. Thank you, Mike. San Antonio saw another day and night of protests following the death of George Floyd. Hundreds gathered at the Bear County Courthouse. Here's video from Sky 12, the crowd making their way to San Antonio Police Headquarters before returning to the courthouse and chanting. This is a fourth night of protests taking place in the Alamo City. Demonstrators promise there will be more protests until the reasons behind them are effectively addressed. During those protests just before 11 last night, a group faced off with police officers near Alamo Plaza. At one point, officers could be seen firing non-lethal projectiles, hitting the crowd with pepper balls, smoke, wooden and rubber balls. Police say it was an effort to disperse unruly crowds causing damage. Police said that the officers were attacked with glass bottles and that they responded accordingly. Some of those projectiles hit a Spectrum San Antonio reporter and a My SA reporter who both tweeted about the incident. Soon after, Mayor Ron Nirenberg responded to reporters' tweets questioning if he was okay with police officers shooting members of the media with non-lethal projectiles. Via Twitter, the mayor said, no, I'm not okay. I, I'm not. I am asking for more information on these projectiles. Several journalists in San Antonio have suffered minor injuries in the four days of the protests, including some from KSAT. Meanwhile, a local activist explaining what changes need to be made following those protests. Camilla Factory helped organize the peaceful protest that took place at Travis Park 
Saturday afternoon. In a recently published article, former President Barack Obama addressed the protests happening across the country. He wrote about the importance of voting and participating in politics, and Camilla agrees. The way to make sure that our police and our mayor and our systems look the way that we want them to um, is to vote um, and to reflect the representation of the people. She says she wants to continue to bring awareness to these issues. Extraordinary times. That's a description Mayor Ron Nierberg used to begin his State of the City speech last night. Speaking live from his office, the mayor's third ever address was certainly unusual. The mayor's nearly 20 minute speech focused heavily on the COVID-19 pandemic. Nirenberg said the city is ready for a second wave. He spoke about the city council's upcoming vote on a $191 million recovery and resiliency plan. That plan will include money for job training, rent assistance, small business grants, and internet access for students. COVID is a tragedy, but the pandemic can be an agent of monumental change if we use it as a catalyst to solve the challenges that have hindered our ability to reach the next level. The mayor also spoke about the ongoing protests here in San Antonio. He drew a distinction between what he called legitimate marches for justice and unfortunate violence by opportunists. KSAC community is partnering with the San Antonio Food Bank in the Spurs Cafe Spurs Give Together Fund as the need for food assistance continues to grow amid the pandemic. Through the end of June, the San Antonio Food Bank will be utilizing donated funds to partner with restaurants who will use their kitchens and chefs to create scratch, nutritious, ready to eat, prepared meals for those in need. In May, Spurs Give and the Tim Duncan Foundation matched donations of $200,000 to the San Antonio Food Bank as part of the new Spurs Cafe initiative. You can get involved by supporting your local restaurants, by ordering curbside or delivery, and by donating, providing more meals. For more information, visit KSAC Community page on KSAC.com right now. 507, 74 degrees. Still ahead, get your nostalgia ready. Sega is releasing a smaller version of one of its consoles as it celebrates its 60th anniversary. Plus, do you want to get paid to drink beer and hike on the Appalachian Trail? We have more on this unique job posting next. I want to get paid and hike. <laughs> Maybe have, drink beer. Have you, ever been, have you ever been to the Appalachians? Oh, I was a little girl. Yeah. Long, long time it's, ago. It's pretty out there. It's not so pretty outside right now. Taking a look outside at live cam. Mike will let you know what our forecast is when we come back. In your morning consumer headlines, air travel is starting to bounce back, but it's still nowhere near pre-pandemic levels. The number of people going through airport security checkpoints nearly doubled over the course of last month. The Transportation Security Administration says it screened nearly 949,000 passengers over the last weekend. That's compared to 476,000 people over the first weekend in May. Still, the pandemic has dealt an unprecedented unprecedented blow to the airline industry. On the busiest day in May, only 14% of travelers flew, compared to the equivalent day in 2019. Police scanner apps are surging in popularity after days of rioting across the United States. 5.0 Radio Police Scanner, one of the most top downloaded apps for iPhones. It costs $5, and making it the top paid app in Apple's App Store. The police scanner apps give real-time information about incidents involving the deployment of police fires, shootings, and looting, or near real time. Some scanner apps also let protesters listen to live police radio feeds. The developer of 5.0 Radio Police Scanner says the app has had more than half a million active users tune in just since Sunday. One like lucky hiker who wants to take on the Appalachian Trail will get paid 20 grand to do it. Here's the catch. You also have to love beer. Devil's Backbone Brewing Company is accepting applications for what it calls its chief hiking officer. The person who lands this gig will trek the entire 2200 mile trail from Georgia to Maine, consuming and sharing plenty of brews along the way. This is for an experienced hiker who is comfortable sleeping under the stars every night. Devil's Backbone estimates it will take five to seven months to complete the assignment which starts next year. So that becomes your full-time job. Could you do it? If I didn't have this full-time job, I think <laughs> I would consider it. I mean, camping, beer. Stars. Winning. 
512 right now, 74 degrees. Even though there's social distancing still going on, there's still several fun things for kids to do this summer. We'll tell you about some of them just ahead. And up next, Sega celebrating its 60th anniversary in a big way, but with a tiny new device. I thought I had my moderate to severe ulcerative colitis under control. Turns out, it was controlling me. Seemed like my symptoms were taking over our time together. Think you'll make it? So I talked to my doctor and learned Humira can help get and keep UC under control when other medications haven't worked well enough. And it helps people achieve control that lasts, so you can experience few or no symptoms. Humira can lower your ability to fight infections. Serious and sometimes fatal infections, including tuberculosis and cancers, including lymphoma, have happened, as have blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, and new or worsening heart failure. Tell your doctor if you've been to areas where certain fungal infections are common, and if you've had TB, hepatitis B, or prone to infections, or have flu-like symptoms or sores. Don't start Humira if you have an infection. Be there for you and them. Ask your doctor about Humira. With Humira, control is possible. If you can't afford your medicine, AbbVie may be able to help. In today's Tech Bites, Amazon's big summer fashion sale. It is expected to start on June 22nd and run up to 10 days. The sale is meant as a boost to fashion brands that have suffered during the coronavirus outbreak. The pandemic forced Amazon to delay its annual Prime Day sale. Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash have been forced to suspend operations in certain cities where curfews are in effect. Those curfews are being imposed amid growing nationwide protests against police brutality. The companies say they're complying with local guidance. And Sega is celebrating its anniversary in a small way. It's releasing Game Gear Mini, a handheld version of its 90s handheld game console. Actually, it's releasing four of them. Each is a different color and has different games. Have fun playing those. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Uh, how do you play that you know, thing? It looked like a little Tamagotchi. Remember those? I don't remember those. Tom the tiny little mini the video little, games? Well, the little egg, uh, the, the pets. No. Gigapets? Nano? Uh, nano? Nanos? I don't remember. I don't oh, remember. No. <laughs> that. I, and and I, that's that's because I know you're a texter with both thumbs. Oh, I'm a, yeah. I, I'd be in trouble with this thing. if. Oh, you do the single? I, I do. Oh, we got to upgrade it. I know, but remember, I'm old, too. No. So. No. Bless your heart. Bless there's, your heart, Mark. There's the main. I remember I'm Sarah. What, Marcus? You're a cool I said, dad. I said Mark's from the Weeble Wobble Age. Yeah, I am. They don't fall down. Uh, the coronavirus pandemic may have put a damper on what you can do and not do this summer, but there's still some ways for families to have fun. Erica Hernandez has a look at some summer fun ideas that are safe and include social distancing. It's not officially summer yet, but KSET.com is the place you want to go to find all the fun ideas available this summer. We have so many articles with different ideas to make the most out of summer 2020. First, let's start with camping. This will be popular this summer for families to get away for a bit. All Texas state parks are open for overnight camping, and there are other spots available on private properties. If camping is not something you're into, we also have lists of glamping locations. Texas is full of gorgeous spots, but this article will help you find those secluded locations that are away from big crowds. Whatever you prefer, an RV park, on the Frio, or a resort in the hill country, you are sure to have a relaxing time at any of these locations. And just because coronavirus is still an issue, we can't forget that our favorite places could soon open up. In fact, Schlitterbahn and Aquatica Water Park at SeaWorld will soon be opening back up. Also, you can make the most of your time in your own backyard, camping and enjoying some water fun. So whatever you decide to do, we hope you stay safe and healthy. For more summer fun ideas, just head to kset.com. Eric Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. <laughs> 518 right now, 74 degrees. We're going to check out the traffic right now with Officer Marcus Trujillo. It's still looking pretty good out there. Uh, right now, we still have uh, plenty of open road out there. No delays in anyone's travel times, no accidents, uh, much more importantly. Let's switch over to Transguide. We'll get a first-hand view. This is I-10 there at the Y. No problems. We're looking now at uh, 35 Benzingman North and South by Lane. Still running smoothly with no problems there at 35 at Evans. Although traffic seems to be getting just a little bit heavier, a little bit earlier in this hump day, middle of the week. 
And we had enough rain in the area yesterday. I was not going to be surprised if somebody saw a rainbow or two. And this one, and even the, the caption. Now that's a rainbow. Yeah, it doesn't even, that picture almost doesn't look real. I mean, look Where, at the intense. Is that, is that downtown that it's? That's what I was thinking. It looks like it's hitting right there on downtown. Oh. Downtown or? Yeah. It, it looks like a postcard. Are you sure? Medical yeah. center, or so, I can't tell. Okay, so no, now you're gonna have that everybody. Little, is that little guy over there? You see in the far left corner. Is that the tower? Of... Mm. No, that's Carlos. I think. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that almost I, looks like a cell phone tower or something. Or, 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 yeah, I don't think that's Tower of the Americas. So yeah. could be the medical it's center. Yeah. Hey, but anyway, back to the rainbow. It, it's so, a whole picture. And then you yeah. notice how blue the skies were above those clouds. And so now everybody's gonna flood the medical center. Good point. <laughs> We've got a little bit of fog around the area as well. Have you ever found? No, I mean, uh, nine miles visibility at the airport, six Randolph and New Braunfels. Pleasanton, it is getting a bit thicker, and then you go further on down to the southeast, and it really thickens up. Uh, visibility is only about a quarter mile or a time zero visibility around Beeville. Victoria, three miles, so obviously some of the thickest fog there, but then you got a good helping uh, up in Kerrville. So this will continue for the next couple of hours. Temperatures are about uh, three, four degrees above normal. We are in the low to mid 70s around most all. I I mean, only a couple of 60s on the map right now, so it's warm out there, and it is humid. When you get these dew point temperatures getting up into the low and even some mid-70s, it has dropped slightly there at Port SA, but I mean, it, this is almost kind of uh, wet towel sort of humidity, especially down around Pleasanton with the dew point of 74. So yesterday, going back in time, uh, about 12 hours, there's those little showers that popped up. There weren't many of them out there, but boy, there were some pretty good downpours if you were stuck underneath one of those, and that may be the case again today. Now, as far as temperatures, we're going to make it in the uh, upper 80s, low 90s around a good chunk of the area, and then also the heat index readings are going to be well up into the mid and upper 90s later on today because we've got all that humidity around here, and in some places, the moisture in the ground as well, which is going to be feeding that. So, computer model, again, has a couple of showers scattered about the area later on today, the majority down to the southeast, and over over the next couple of days, if anything does pop up, it would be basically, you know, kind of some sea breeze showers here along the coastal plain. Otherwise, rain chances are almost going to be completely out of the forecast once we get into Thursday and then going on into the weekend. Down to the uh, south, there is a tropical storm Cristobal, and it's going to sort of kind of meander around still and is going to move on to the uh, Yucatan Peninsula a little bit there, probably lose some strength by tomorrow and then go back into the Gulf of Mexico. This bathwater out here, which it feeds off of very warm sea surface temperatures there, and it's going to continue to work its way to the north. And uh, the latest computer models have it a little further to the east of us. So it would basically be affecting New Orleans and then heading over in toward Mississippi and Alabama. This is going to be the wet area to the right of its uh, direction of travel. We're going to be on the not rainy side of it. And and with the sinking air on the backside of that, that's really going to help to heat things up. So that will be the kind of the indirect impact from uh, that tropical storm as far as we're concerned next week. 83 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. Got some fog to deal with this morning. 90 later on this afternoon, partly cloudy. Couple of scattered showers or a thunderstorm is possible today. Most won't see anything, but you know, might have some of those hefty downpours. Tomorrow, 92, 94 Friday. And then we're looking at mid and upper 90s over the weekend. And yeah, that's what we're going to be seeing from Cristobal 100s by the first of the week because we'll be on the hot side of that storm. Okay. Bring on the heat. That's right. Thank you, Mike. 523, 74 degrees. Up next in your morning spotlight, more on a new mockumentary that takes a comic look at social media influencers and how one person found inspiration in a real Instagram couple. Whether you prefer your stories coming from fairy tales or social media, we have something for you in today's Hollywood Minute. Here's CNN's David Daniel. Who are we? Humans. The mockumentary, The Social Ones, now on most digital platforms, takes a comic look at social media influencers. Star Allegra Edwards says she found inspiration in a real Instagram couple. They're unbelievably beautiful. They're so sweet, very stylish. You want everything in their home. You want to eat what they eat. You want to have the babies that they made together because they're that cute and they're constantly getting gifted all kinds of clothing and accessories all the time. Could you move over for him? He's shooting an Instagram live from my phone. So. Look, I'm trying to shoot a documentary, guys. 
okay, but this is important, so move. You pinch yourself, you faint, and then you get up and you call your agent immediately and say like, we're doing this. <laughs> Paul yeah, Feig I, I, is set to direct an adaptation of the best-selling novel The School for Good and Evil for Netflix. The book is the first in a series about the place children are trained to be fairy tale heroes and villains. The novels have sold more than two and a half million copies. The final book in the series just hit stores. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time check, 527, 74 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour, a closer look at why the coronavirus pandemic is still causing problems for the U.S., even as a vaccine is closer to being available. And we'll tell you about a great opportunity this weekend to get out to area lakes and streams and rivers for some free fishing fun. Good morning. It's Wednesday, June 3rd, and let's check on traffic this morning with... Wait, are we not checking on traffic? I think we are. Yes. Yes. So the latest now. <laughs> Over at the Storyteller right now as we take a look, we have uh, pretty good roadways out there with uh, no accidents at this time. So that's the great news. You see a lot of green. You see some white, but uh, that's only because right now at that point, uh, that particular time, there were, uh, the server was not receiving any data, but as you see, no accidents out there. So that's the important point. Let's take a look at a couple of transguide cameras out there. I-10 at the Y, still no problems. And I-10 and Frio inbound, outbound lanes looking great with uh, no delays at this point. I-10 uh, 1604, so far, no issues there. Mike? A lot of fuzz around a lot of the streetlights. Thank you very much, Marcus. And there's a bunch of humidity out there. You can sort of just sort of see it hanging there along the horizon. Visibility uh, down to four miles at Kerrville. Six New Braunfels, three Pleasantons. Not bad, but it gets much thicker down uh, to the southeast around Beeville. Visibility quarter mile at times. It's been down to just basically zero pea soup sort of fog there. And it seems like the thickest, obviously, is down here to the southeast, even though we do have a little bit out in portions of the hill country. So that's something we have to watch over the next couple of hours because it usually does get thicker as we get in closer toward sunrise and just after sunrise. Uh, low, low to mid 70s for temperatures. We're about uh, four or five degrees above normal. Humidity, dew point temperatures, measure moisture in the atmosphere. You don't like seeing them up in the low 70s. That's that summer kind of humidity, and it's going to be sticking around. So we'll be dealing with heat index readings, adding about 5 degrees roughly to the afternoon high temperatures. Molds on the high side. Grass is low, and uh, throughout the rest of today, 83 degrees at noon, 90 high temperature. That's on the thermometer, but again, it's going to feel like closer to the mid 90s when you add in the, all that humidity out there. And one or two of those scattered showers will have partly cloudy skies, but still, Couple folks are going to be seeing those, you know, pretty decent downpours. Got caught in one yesterday as well. It comes down hard and heavy, and they move on out, but they'll just be kind of scattered about there. Uh, after today, get ready because things are definitely going to be heating up. That and the latest on Tropical Storm Cristobal down there in the southern Gulf of Mexico. Sarah, thanks, Mike. San Antonio's mayor says he wants some answers. This is in response to what happened during a protest downtown late last night. Police fired projectiles that hit both protesters and members of the media gathered at Alamo Plaza. Katrina Weber is there now with a live report. Katrina, how are things looking now? Right now, it is very quiet. Really, the only police, only people we see out here are those police officers. They're here to enforce a curfew uh, that is actually in effect here at Alamo Plaza until 6 o'clock this morning, and it's in effect all week long. Now, last night, it was a very different situation. We have Sky 12 video from around 11 last night when there were people out here protesting after the curfew. You can see in the video the crowd suddenly start running away. San Antonio police sent a tweet out to the media saying that they did fire projectiles, including rubber and wooden balls, as well as pepper spray and smoke. Video of that also has been posted all over social media, in many cases by people who say police fired at the crowd during a peaceful protest. Members of the media also were hit by those projectiles. In their tweet, SAPD said they were trying to disperse an unruly crowd. They also denied targeting members of the media. Mayor Ron Nirenberg sent out a tweet of his own later saying that he wants more information about those projectiles. Now, this was the fourth night of protesting here in San Antonio, protesting against the death of George Floyd at the hands of Minneapolis, Minneapolis police, as well as racial inequality. We do expect that we will hear more from Mayor Nirenberg, as well as probably the San Antonio police later on today. Reporting live at Alamo Plaza, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Katrina, thank you very much. Also new this morning, San Antonio police say a man in his 60s was hit by gunfire while at his home. Happened just before one this morning in the 400 block of South Olive. That's just east of downtown. SAPD says the man was in the back room of the house when he was hit in the arm. He was taken to the hospital in stable condition. Police say another person in the house was there at the time, but no other injuries were reported. More than 1.8 million cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed here in the U.S. according to Johns Hopkins University. As CNN's Johns Lawrence reports, while some progress is being made on a vaccine, there are concerns about the virus spreading. The large George Floyd protests may result in more coronavirus outbreaks. I just hope that people will get tested and will remember that we are really, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. Some people are wearing masks, but social distancing is at a minimum. There's no question there's a danger this could intensify the spread of the coronavirus. U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Jerome Adams says he expects more coronavirus cases nationally due to the large gatherings. On a more optimistic note, the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases says a phase three trial for one potential vaccine is scheduled to start next month. By the beginning of 2021, we hope to have a couple of hundred million doses. As for the next few months, the National Institutes of Health says the summer heat probably won't stop the virus, contrary to a prediction President Trump made earlier this year. Meantime, the president tweeting Tuesday that the RNC will be looking for another host for its convention in late August. North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper isn't planning to ease social distancing guidelines for the convention. Three Republican officials say President Trump will therefore not accept the nomination in Charlotte. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The memorial that honors the victims of the 1995 Oklahoma City bombing has been vandalized during recent protests. Oklahoma City police say, according to their initial reports, two people were arrested in connection to the vandalism. Many residents say they are disheartened to see damage come to a place that's already seen so much violence. The city is now trying to clean up the damage left behind. Google is now facing a $5 billion lawsuit ac ac accusing the company of illegally invading the privacy of millions. According to the lawsuit, Google's Chrome browser still collects some information on users' web browsing habits. That's even when in the browser's private mode, Google says every time you open an incognito window, there is a warning that information may be collected. 537, 74 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, this weekend should be the perfect weekend for some fishing on area lakes and streams. We'll tell you why. And up next, following Mayor Ron Nierberg's State of the City address, we'll take a look at how the coronavirus pandemic has affected the city over the past few months. 74 degrees outside, taking a look at live cam. It looks a little hazy out there and very, very humid. Mike will have the forecast when we come back. Five forty. Welcome back to GMSA. The pandemic, a big topic in last night's State of the City address and results for our most recent bare facts. KSAT Rivard report poll show there is a rising concern about Distance learning 62% of Bear County residents polled says school closures is an extremely or very serious problem in San Antonio with nearly half of those polled saying distance learning is not productive for their kids. Plus, we know the pandemic is leaving a lasting mark on businesses here in San Antonio. An overwhelming majority of those polled said they were worried about local businesses closing and loss of income due to the low wages or job loss. These fears were confirmed by San Antonio City Manager Eric Walsh, who told us that an estimated 100,000 or more have claimed unemployment. Now, these are just some of the changes and adjustments the coronavirus has forced the city to make. Our Steve Spreester and E.C.'s Romero give us a recap of how things have unfolded so far in San Antonio. The first cohort of evacuees from China arrive at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland on February 7th. Less than a week later, one of them tests positive, technically becoming the first case in San Antonio. Just days after evacuees from the Diamond Princess cruise ship arrive. Fast forward to March 1st, the CDC releases a patient from Lackland after twice testing negative. That patient then spends 11 hours in the community, including a visit to North Star Mall, only to find out a third test came back positive for COVID-19. The next day, Mayor Ron Nuremberg announces his first emergency order, preventing evacuees at Lackland from being released. Within 24 hours, the city receives its first batch of testing kits and the COVID-19 hotline is launched. 
10 days after the first Bear County resident test positive, Fiesta is postponed. That same day, the mayor issues his second emergency order prohibiting gatherings of 500 or more. Third and fourth orders later limit gatherings to 50 and prohibit inside dining and close entertainment venues and bars. On March 19th, community spread is confirmed. And on March 22nd, our first COVID-19 related death. The following day, a fifth emergency order, stay home, work safe, and schools cancel in-person classes and move totally online. Moving to March 27th, daily briefings begin with the mayor and county judge Nelson Wolf. Entering April, an outbreak is confirmed at the Southeast Nursing and Rehabilitation Center, ultimately resulting in at least 19 deaths. From here, testing expands, and on April 23rd, the Emergency Housing Assistance Program is announced. In May, we see more emergency orders complying with the governor's guidelines for reopening. And slowly but surely, restaurants, theaters, retail, salons, gyms, and eventually bars reopen at limited capacity. Mayor Ron Nuremberg says the city is ready for a second wave whenever, whenever it may hit. City Council will soon vote on a $191 million recovery and resiliency plan. And we'll keep you posted as those stories continue to develop. Right now it's 543, 74 degrees. Up next, we'll tell you how to take advantage of Texas Free Fishing Day coming up this weekend. Welcome back. It's 546. This Saturday, Texas celebrates its free fishing day. Typically, you need a fishing license to fish anywhere in the Lone Star State. You can cast them on any body of water, salt or fresh in Texas just this Saturday for free. What's awesome about this event is that it's a way to educate people about the need for fishing licenses, but also you get to fish for free. 100% of your fishing license fees goes towards park Texas Parks and Wildlife Department for on the ground conservation efforts like fish stocking. License fees vary depending on how long it's for and what type of water you are fishing in. They can range from $47 to $11. You can buy them online or certain fishing sports and retailers, retail stores. But this Saturday, Texans can fish on any public body of water in the state without a license. This day is especially good for first time fishermen and women. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Department will have all kinds of fishing 101 videos and tips online for first timers. We have those links online at ksat.com. And this day also encourages you just to get outside and explore what bodies of water you have in our area. Mark, you are our expert resident fisherman. So what would you say are some tips for first timers out there? Well, I, it's just, remember, it's all about having fun. And I, I brought along some few basic lures. You don't have to spend a lot of money on this stuff. We're talking about fresh freshwater fishing, especially for like uh, panfish, you know, like uh, uh, perch or I'm sorry, uh, crappie, sunfish, uh, also uh, bass, but uh, the good old fashioned, and you don't have to spend a, money, a lot of money on this. Uh, this is a, a spinnerbait, good old fashioned spinnerbait. Uh, your dad or grandpa may have thrown this one. I put a little plastic fish on it there to mimic uh, a bait fish, the shad. Uh, so you can use that. Also, bass really like these topwater lures. This little hollow frog floats so across cute. the top and actually spits out some water, but the hooks are kind of recessed, so it's a little bit more weedless. It, it snags a little bit less. They like to go those on the top of the water. And then these uh, good old-fashioned plastic worms. Um, the glitter worms. The glitter worm. Yeah, it's kind of so. The, and natural colors are the best. This is like a watermelon yeah, red. You, you see like a lot of like the the bright greens and the pinks. Yeah, fish, especially bass, particularly like the natural colors because you're trying to uh, mimic uh, their natural, what they're, what they're feeding on. This one's rigged wacky style. It's got a weedless, uh, weedless hook kind of rigged through the middle of it, but this kind of floats down and what you're doing is you're just kind of bouncing it off the bottom. So that's when you're trying to get fish that are a little bit further down, but you're looking for structure. You're looking for down trees and stumps. That's where a lot of these oh. bass are kind of holding and kind of hanging yeah, out. All those. And you can try just about anywhere Keep in mind, Woodlawn Lake, they stocked with thousands of 4, bass 000, yesterday, yeah. and those are just fingerling bass. I mean, they're, they're probably less than that size, but in five years or so, those are going to be for some very catchable bass over there at Woodlawn Lake, and that's here in the city. Oh my, and so, I'm assuming you'll be out there this Saturday. I, I have other plans this weekend. I'm hiking, but almost any other weekend, you'll catch me out trying these, and I've had the most luck 
on that one lately, the spinnerbait in a white color, especially on overcast days. But I try to post some of this stuff on my Instagram page, and that's uh, Mark on Fishing. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. Just go out and have fun. And again, <laughs> don't spend a lot of money on a super fancy rod reel. Go out there and just have a blast, especially with the kids. Thank you so much, Mark, for all that. It is 549 and 74 degrees. Let's go to Marcus. And still no accidents out there on the roadway, so let's go to Transguide once again. I-10 and Frail still looking pretty good out there with no problems, 10 at 1604. As we move on to some other areas, you can see that uh, a little bit further down the road, 1604 Tradesman, few vehicles on those westbound lanes, eastbound not too bad, and 410 at Paramidal, eastbound and westbound lanes looking pretty good. Just one stalled vehicle there off to the side in the downtown area, no problems. Remember, it's called fishing, not catching. Well, right. <laughs> <laughs> you may not get. The key is if you, you if anything. you're persistent, you're well, catching yeah. more than you are. Just Mark is always life. catching. Well, I, I'd like to think so. The, I, well, we see all your posts with all the catches. You know, you talk about you don't need all the big, expensive, fancy stuff. Mm -hmm. Years and years ago, my boys were literally went with some guys and some families, right? Dads and sons fishing, and um, <laughs> uh, you know, all these guys had this expensive rods and all that stuff. Right. My one son with a like seven dollar Spider-Man rod. Caught a fish probably about yay big. Yay big. <laughs> well, well, you can have just one of these or you can have that many. That's one of his three boxes that <laughs> yes. he brought in. So those are all spinner baits. So right. different colors for different water conditions and stuff like that. So yeah, I've got the bug. Uh, hey, mm -hmm. fantastic. Just, and just enjoy it. Sunscreen too. Lots of yes, because And take plenty of water this weekend because it's going to be hot this weekend if you're out there. And you can get a nasty burn if you get that reflection off the water. So, hey, talk about uh, yesterday with some of those uh, showers and those downpours we had. They were coming down pretty hard and, oh, excuse me, we've got the uh, yeah, the uh, San Antonio Humane Society oh. to talk about, first of all. I forgot. Look at this guy. No. He didn't just have it. Well, I want to tell you about some very special animals at the San Antonio Humane Society. Here's a look at Wilbur. It's a great name for him. One-year-old terrier pit bull basset hound mix. What a combination. He is just a burst of energy, as you can see. Best features are his cute little legs, and he can run, as you saw, like the wind splashing in the water. He is wanting to find his forever home very soon. There's also Scooter, four-year-old male terrier, American uh, pit bull mix. He'd also love to find a good home. Look at that smile on his face. To learn more, just go over to the website, sahumane.org. You can also donate needed items via their blue bin located outside the shelter's front door. Amazon wish list, 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226761. Thank you very much, San Antonio Humane Society, for sending in those pictures. Now, the, some of those showers yesterday, Timberwood Park, those hefty downpours didn't take long. Got a nice inch of rain in the rain gauge back there, and that's helping out all the flowers and the grass. And I don't know about you, but I know I got to cut my grass coming up here. Better than the alternative. Nine miles visibility here in town, six in New Braunfels, four down the road in Pleasanton, and a lot of thick fog down along the coastal plain. And visibilities are obviously going to be going back and forth for the next couple of hours and probably will get thicker in the next uh, couple of hours right around sunrise. It usually does at that time. Low to mid 70s around most of the area and the humidity dew point temperatures. The measure moisture in the atmosphere. You get up to around 73, 74 around Pleasanton. That's getting really darn humid. So you are definitely going to notice it when you step out the front door this morning. So we had those uh, pop up showers, uh, maybe a couple of thunderstorms. There weren't that many thunderstorms. And there weren't that many showers yesterday, very few and far between. That's going to be the situation again today. Just one or two of them popping up there, but you might have some pretty hefty downpours. Temperatures will make it up into the upper 80s and low 90s around a good portion of the area, but we'll also have the humidity around, so dew point temperatures will be definitely in the mid to upper 90s, and we're going to be dealing with, or excuse me, heat index values are going to be well up into the mid to upper 90s, and that's going to be something uh, you'll be dealing with, we'll all be dealing with for the next few days, because it's going to heat up and the humidity is going to be sticking around. So a couple of scattered showers around throughout the rest of today. Otherwise, partly cloudy skies and temperatures are still going to be somewhat held in check for uh, this afternoon at least, but then they're going to really start to go up. All right, down here to the south, that is now Tropical Storm. Remember this time yesterday it was still Tropical Depression number three. Now it is Tropical Storm Cristobal and it is just going to hang around here down around the Yucatan Peninsula, maybe go on shore, lose a little strength and then go back up into the middle of the Gulf and reemerge and regain strength as a tropical storm. And the latest 
data from the Hurricane Center has it a little further to the east of us. So it looks like it's going to make a direct hit on New Orleans and the rainy side of it is to the right side of that. So we would be on the not so wet side if we get anything from it. But one thing for sure, uh, the indirect effect is going to be helping to heat things up. We're going to be on the sinking side of that and it's going to get hot, especially late in the uh, in the uh, later on the weekend, 83 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies and then 90 for a high temperature today. Again, a couple of scattered showers around the area and tomorrow mostly sunny skies, plenty of sunshine the next few days and mid upper 90s, low hundreds by the first part of next week. Sarah, Mark 101. Thank you, Mike. 555, 74 degrees. Up next, you are cordially invited to the world's largest virtual cheese party. We'll have more of the cheesy details ahead. Some cheesemakers want you online tomorrow. Some dairy farmers in Wisconsin will hold the world's largest online cheese party. Tomorrow is National Cheese Day. The group plans to mark it by offering people an opportunity to meet Wisconsin cheesemakers online. The event will also include cheese tastings, trivia, giveaways, and a surprise guest. Coming up on GMSA, investing in the stock market, not just something for your parents, but now young people are entering the world of stocks, too. A closer look at what's sparking their interest. Coming up. San Antonio police take some drastic steps to break up a crowd of protesters. Now the mayor says he wants some answers. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. And we're also going to show you more video from overnight protests in downtown San Antonio from Sky 12 coming up here on GMSA. Taking a look outside at live cam. It looks a little muggy out there, but will things heat up? Mike with his forecast in just a bit. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is June 3rd. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Let's check traffic right now with Officer Marcus Trujillo. And I just saw a push alert for an accident. It looked like I think it was a uh, 10, I-10? 10? 10 in Bernie Stays Road. Now, does that location sound familiar? We've been telling you there's construction out there. 10 at Bernie Stays Road in that same direction. So we're going out westbound on I-10, Bernie Stays Road. That's where that accident is uh, being reported. As you can see, we're already getting that uh, indication from the uh, traffic uh, flow signs turning yellow that we are starting to get some slowdowns in that area despite the light traffic. So expect huge delays until we get all that off the roadway and get that construction cleared up. Outside right now, this is 10 and Hoyerman Road, as you can see, a little bit blurry there, but you can see from the tail lights that uh, traffic is definitely slowing down all those westbound lanes. Mike? The other thing you want to watch out for is a little bit of fog around the area. Now, we don't have much in the metropolitan I don't know if you've seen much out there, but one thing you can see a lot more in the way of some fuzz around the uh, street lights there, that glow and the uh, star effect, because there is a ton of moisture out there, a ton of humidity. Open up the front door, yeah, you're going to feel it. Uh, four miles visibility, Randolph Stinson, it's dropped a little bit in these two locations. Pleasanton is still at four miles, five Kerrville, six New Braunfels, and then Beeville is still got the thick spot. Gonzalez, you've dropped down as well. So we're starting to see a a little bit thicker and it's starting to kind of creep in here a little more from the uh, east and the southeast. So we'll have to watch that over the next couple of hours as far as it getting thicker, which usually does as we get in toward sunrise and just after that. Temperatures mid to upper, excuse me, low to mid 70s on average. And then the dew point temperatures that measure moisture in the atmosphere. This is why you open up the front door and it's going to be. Yeah, you'll notice the humidity, especially on Pleasant, and that's just even one degree in dew points, 73 to 74, makes a whole lot of difference. Mold is on the high side, a little bit of grass is showing up, and temperature throughout the day, we will be pretty much steady for the next couple of hours with the humidity and the clouds around here, and then we'll see more sunshine later on, and we'll make it into the low 80s by noon. High temperature right around 90, normal high, but it's going to feel about four or five degrees warmer than that with the humidity and we'll still have a couple of uh, those stray showers around here. Few and far between, but just one or two of them, maybe a decent downpour as well. Get ready because it is going to be heating up, especially later on late weekend in the first part of next week. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Mark, Sarah. Thank you, Mike. We expect to hear more today from San Antonio's mayor and from police about an incident in Alamo Plaza late last night. Police fired on a crowd of protesters using projectiles. Members of the media were also hit. Our Katrina Weber is live at Alamo Plaza now. Katrina, good morning. What's the situation out there right now? And you mentioned earlier that the mayor wants some answers. 
Well, that's right. Very quiet out here right now. The mayor says he is after more information on exactly what happened. The police say that their actions were necessary, while others are calling them excessive. All of it played out on cameras, including the one in our Sky 12. In our video, you can see a large group of people gathered at Alamo Plaza. They suddenly start running. This was the fourth night of protesting against the killing of George Floyd by Minneapolis police, as well as racial inequality. The group was here around 11 last night, while there was a curfew in effect for Alamo Plaza. According to people on social media, police fired on them as they were protesting peacefully. Several members of the media also were hit by some of those projectiles. In a tweet, San Antonio police said that they did use the projectiles to break up an unruly crowd. And they said the media were not the target. Mayor Ron Nirenberg also took to Twitter overnight saying he wants some answers, that he wants more information on the projectiles that were used. This morning, again, a different scene here at Alamo Plaza. It's almost a ghost town right now. Most of the police officers who were out here earlier and had spent the night here uh, have gone since that curfew was lifted just at 6 o'clock this morning. Reporting live at Alamo Plaza, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Alamo Plaza will be closed every night this week. City leaders say it is to minimize the possibility of civil unrest and to damage the plaza every night at 830. The plaza will close. The San Antonio Police Department will have an increased presence around the plaza and downtown to prevent any potential disturbances. The plaza will reopen every morning at 6. The closures will last until Saturday morning, but could be extended if, if city leaders feel it is necessary. In Houston, George Floyd's hometown, at least 200 people have been arrested in just the last 24 hours. It comes after tens of thousands of people joined Floyd's family for a protest where they made a plea for peace. ABC's Mona Kozar Abdi has a story. George Floyd's family leading the way in Houston. Marching side by side with a crowd of 60,000. The crowd has doubled in size. Delivering a heartfelt message. We want to share tears today. But we're not going to drop a drop of blood in Houston, Texas today. The peaceful crowd coming together as a Houston police chief walked among them, hugging demonstrators in a show of solidarity. It's visceral, the pain and, and the anger. Thousands chanting late into the night. Earlier in the day, I want justice for him because he was good. Floyd's daughter and her mother remembered the father that was ripped from their lives. Shiana does not have a father. He will never see her grow up, graduate. He will never walk her down the aisle. If it's a problem she's having and she needs her dad, she does not have that anymore. Plans for Floyd's funeral coming together. Former boxer Floyd Mayweather announcing he'll pay for the services. And the Floyd family attorney says Joe Biden is expected to attend. The former vice president showed his support Tuesday, speaking of his own loss as a parent losing a son. I know what it means to have that black hole in your chest where your grief is being sucked into it. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Texas Governor Greg Abbott says he will not be asking President Trump for the U.S. military's help in dealing with protests across the Lone Star State. Abbott says Texans can take care of Texans and that the state has its own resources to mobilize. Governor Abbott supported the right of people to protest in what he called a horrific act of police brutality against George Floyd. But the governor took a hard stance against violence that happened at some of the protests around the state. New this, new this morning. New this morning, one man is in the hospital after being shot in the arm while in his home. Police say it happened around 1 this morning in the 400 block of South Olive Street, which is near Hackberry and Martin Luther King Drive. That's not far from the Alamo Dome. Police say that the man was in the back room of his home when someone started shooting from outside. They ran off after firing several times into the house. The man was taken to Bamsey and is expected to recover. San Antonio City leaders now looking at how prevalent asymptomatic COVID-19 cases are in our community, specifically looking into households now. Yesterday, they started a study with UT Health and Mobile Integrated Health, where they plan to visit 500 homes in the city to see if people would volunteer to have a test done. They say the results would help answer several questions while informing if they have the virus but are not showing any symptoms.
our test um, turnaround is pretty quick. And absolutely, if we get if if we have positives in those households, we'll do exactly the way that we've done any of our other testing. So we'll go back and notify them, and um, and and use the proper uh, procedures after that. Dr. Emmerich says she hopes to have all 500 samples collected by the end of the week. You must be over the age of 18 and have never been tested for COVID-19 to qualify. You must have had no symptoms and consent to participate as well. Well, businesses at Historic Market Square will reopen this morning at 10. There are about 100 small business owners that will fill up the Farmer's Market building in El Mercado. There will be some changes to the shopping experience. Business owners may require you to wear a face mask and to practice social distancing. There may also be temperature checks. Shoppers are encouraged to wash or sanitize their hands in between storefronts and use contactless payments if possible. 609, 74 degrees. This morning, the six-year-old daughter of George Floyd is sharing her thoughts. Hear what she has to say after her father's death in today's GMA First Look. And summer activities may look a little different this year. After the break, we'll see some ways to enjoy the season while staying six feet apart. Taking a look outside with live cam. Like Mike said earlier, it's maybe some fog and it's a little muggy out there. He'll have his full forecast when we come back. Six thirteen. the pandemic may have put a damper on what you can and cannot do this summer, but there's still ways for families to have fun. Erica Hernandez has a look at some summer fun ideas that are safe and include social distancing. It's not officially summer yet, but KSET.com is the place you want to go to find all the fun ideas available this summer. We have so many articles with different ideas to make the most out of summer 2020. First, let's start with camping. This will be popular this summer for families to get away for a bit. All Texas state parks are open for overnight camping, and there are other spots available on private properties. If camping is not something you're into, we also have lists of glamping locations. Texas is full of gorgeous spots, but this article will help you find those secluded locations that are away from big crowds. Whatever you prefer, an RV park, on the Frio, or a resort in the hill country, you are sure to have a relaxing time at any of these locations. And just because coronavirus is still an issue, we can't forget that our favorite places could soon open up. In fact, Schlitterbahn and Aquatica Water Park at SeaWorld will soon be opening back up. Also, you can make the most of your time in your own backyard, camping and enjoying some water fun. So whatever you decide to do, we hope you stay safe and healthy. For more summer fun ideas, just head to KSET.com. Erica Hernandez, KSET 12 News. Okay, coming up in a sec, Mike has another KSAT Connect picture and the latest on Tropical Storm Cristobal. But first, uh, how the traffic is doing out there with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, we do have an accident, and that accident uh, causing a little bit of delay. So outbound lanes of 10, westbound I-10. We're headed outside 1604 over to Bernie Stage Road. That's where we have uh, long lines of traffic. Look at that the red indicator, indicator there. That means the traffic is just about stopped at a standstill. Uh, access road also inundated with traffic as well. So try to avoid that area if at all possible. This is 10 at Hoyerman Road. Folks are headed towards that location. You can see further up ahead. That's where the accident is. So we'll get this clear up just as quickly as we can. Thank, Thank you very sir. much, Marcus. I he mentioned is. KSAT Connect. Yeah, for a reason. Yeah, yeah, look at this great picture. Yeah, another nice one. Beautiful. Yeah, some folks uh, still had some rain around uh, as the sun was going down yesterday. We had those uh, scattered showers and even a couple of thunderstorms, a couple of heavier downpours as well. But a lot of folks didn't see anything. And boy, that's a great shot. It looks like a painting. Thank you. But look at that morning. Beautiful off those clouds there. Uh, this afternoon's sunset should be as just about as good looking as well. Nine miles visibility at the airport. It has dropped down even more so at Randolph, now down to three miles. So a little bit thicker fog, plenty of it down around uh, Gonzales, Victoria, as well as Beeville, where the thickest fog has been all morning long. Not much well out to the west, just hints of it there, say around uh, Kerrville. And just kind of watch out for the next couple of hours. Again, I've been saying that all morning because it will get 
and it has been getting a little bit thicker in places as we get closer to, uh, to sunrise. Temperatures are uh, low to mid 70s, about four or five degrees above normal. And again, the, the humidity, you step outside, you know that dew points are above 70 and you can just feel the humidity out there and it's going to be sticking around. So that's going to help with heat index readings later on this afternoon, getting up into uh, about the mid 90s, going for forecast high here in town of 90 and then add about four, five, six degrees to that. And that's what it will feel like. Now, of course, if you get one of those showers, obviously that's going to put a lid on any heating, some rain cool there. And we had those uh, showers popping up um, early to mid late afternoon yesterday afternoon. There wasn't a, I mean, aerial coverage was not that great, but if you were underneath one of them, it got uh, it was coming down pretty good. And there's uh, what the forecast heat index is later on today. We're looking at mid to uh, some upper 90s around here. Again, a couple of those uh, scattered showers will be popping up, maybe a heavier downpour here and there. The majority of it's going to be off to the east and, and the coverage wise, even with these computer models, which sometimes use sort of a broad brush, if you will, it's not all that great. About the same thing tomorrow, uh, maybe down along the coastal plain, a couple of those showers, and that'll pretty much be about it. All right. Tropical storm Cristobal down there in the Bay of Campeche. It is uh, just been it's going to still kind of hang around right there in the water, maybe move on shore a little bit lose a little bit of strength and then come back into the Gulf of Mexico, gain more strength. It is still forecast to just be, and I say just be, but a tropical storm it will not gain hurricane strength, uh, but it's going to be obviously a pretty good rain producer here along the coast. And the rainy side of it is on the right hand side in relation to its direction of travel. So we're going to be on the non rainy side. And as a matter of fact, we're going to be on the, the hot side of this thing because the air tends to sink on the, the left hand side, if you will, of any sort of uh, tropical circulation like that. So that's going to help to heat us up. So the high is sort of in control as of right now for us, and that's going to move across. It's going to help to heat things up going in toward the weekend a little bit. And then here comes the tropical system and the high is going to move out of the way just enough to allow this thing. It's not going to push it in on top of us. So it will be staying obviously to the east of us. And like I said, we're going to be uh, heating up and then here comes another area of high pressure for the uh, mid to latter portion of next week to looks like keep it on the hotter side around here. So, yep, it's definitely getting into summer, obviously. 83 today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature today makes it up to 90 at about four, five, six to that. That's what it will feel like. And then a couple of those scattered showers, decent downpour or two can be expected, but most of us won't see any of that. 92 tomorrow, more sunshine, you know, shower or two along the, the coast or the coastal plain is possible, but notice how temperatures continue to go up and up and up. And yeah, we're looking at the right now, pretty good chance for uh, some triple digits by the first of next week. Uh, we, you, you could see the temperature rise coming. That is the definite trend. Yeah, mm. oh, just I mean, seeing it in, in print, it just mm. it's here. Yep. Thank you, Mike. 619, 74 degrees. Investing in the stock market is not just something for your parents. Young people are entering the world of stocks, too. We'll see what's sparking their interest after the break. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a Polar Pop. We are Circle K. Was that your grandfather, leading armies to battle? Was that your great aunt, keeping armies alive? Drafting the plans, taking the pictures. Was it your family members who flew? Who fixed? Who fought? Who rose to the occasion when, when the, the world, world needed them most? Find and honor your ancestors who served in World War II. Their stories live on at Ancestry. My new normal, fewer asthma attacks. Less oral steroids. Taking my treatment at home. Nucala is a once monthly add-on injection for severe eosinophilic asthma, not for sudden breathing problems. Allergic reactions can occur. Get help right away for swelling of face, mouth, tongue, or trouble breathing. Infections that can cause shingles have occurred. Don't stop steroids unless told by your doctor. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection. May cause headache, injection site reactions, back pain, and fatigue. Ask your doctor about Nucala at home. Find your new normal with Nucala. In this morning's GMA First Look, an emotional interview with George Floyd's six-year-old daughter, ABC's Eva Pilgrim spoke with Gianna Floyd. What do you want people to know? 
kind of I miss him. Gianna's mother, Roxy Washington, saying that George loved his daughter. He was always a great dad. I mean, that was his baby. He loved his little girl. Roxy found out about George's death when she got a phone call. She then got on the internet and saw the video. I watched it only for a moment. I couldn't believe that somebody was doing him like that because I loved him so much. I wanted to help him. I wish I could have been there to help him. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have live reports from Minnesota and across the country. With your GMA First Look, I'm Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash have been forced to stop operations in certain cities where curfews are in effect. Those curfews being imposed amid those nationwide protests against police brutality. The companies say they're complying with rules from local officials. Amazon's big summer fashion sale is expected to start on June 22nd and will run up to 10 days. The sale is meant to help fashion brands that have suffered during the coronavirus pandemic since it's forced Amazon to delay its annual Prime Day sale. Well, just 31 percent millennials are the lowest percentage age group to own stocks. However, an app with an average user's age of 32 is changing the way people view, buy and, and sell the stocks of the hottest companies on the market. RJ Marquez has those details. The market is open for business. And millennials are the new buyers, thanks to the user-friendly app, Robinhood. It is an online brokerage with a surprising 78% of users under the age of 35. Sites like Robinhood, M1 Finance, TD Ameritrade, and Fidelity allow buying and selling stocks free of charge. And on Robinhood, you can purchase stocks for as little as $1 by only buying part of a stock share. Tencent, Disney, um, owns Tesla for a minute, and yeah, you can buy anything you want. Consider setting long and short-term goals. Think about the life events you want to accomplish and how long it will take you to get there. Once you figure out how much you want to invest, the net annual earnings on it and how long it will be, then you can decide if certain stocks are worth the investment. Also, be diverse. Invest in different companies and different industries so that if one industry is not doing well at one point, another industry may be thriving. Finally, control your emotions. You might think a company is about to go under because of what others feel, but it's important to stick to logic rather than feeling. With the stock market dropping, now is a good time to buy. Companies that have halted their services will really need investments to keep them afloat for the time being. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. It is 626 and 74 degrees. Protests continue last night here in San Antonio, and now the mayor is looking for clarification on tactics used by San Antonio police. We'll have the very latest. And a local activist is saying what she wants to happen after the protests in San Antonio and around the country. See what she has to say in our next half hour. Pepper spray, gas, rubber and wooden balls. San Antonio police say all of that was necessary during a protest late last night. Others are calling it excessive. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have more on that story. A fresh night of protests as the president faces backlash for his handling of the crisis. I'm Inez de la Quatera in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. And outside with live cam, we're starting out in the mid 70s out there. Lots of clouds, lots of moisture in the form of humidity. And Mike says be on the lookout perhaps for a little bit of fog. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is June 3rd. And it is muggy out there. And we'll talk forecast in a second. But first, looks like we've got at least one incident with Officer Marcus Trujillo. And some good news about that incident. If we go to that accident, westbound I-10, right there at uh, Bernie Stage Road. As you see, we've gone from red to orange, and that's because the accident has been cleared. So we're starting to get folks moving once again. However, if you look at that skyline, mm -hmm. It's not looking too good, Mike. <laughs> it's it's humid. I mean, the sun is obviously uh, coming up, but yeah, I mean, it's just gray and almost kind of murky. Makes out you want to turn around and go back home. All right, let's go, guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can throw the covers back over your head, but uh, and look at that. I mean, look at this picture. Even in the foreground, you can see it's a little little fuzzy looking there and a lot of fuzz around the uh, street lights. Randolph uh, visibility has dropped down another quarter of a mile to two and three quarters. New Braunfels not bad. Uh, Stinson and Pleasanton both at four miles. So it is getting thicker in some spots. Beeville's back down to zero visibility a lot. Gonzalez and Victoria. So again, we have to watch out even you know for the next uh, couple of hours as this fog continues to thicken up as it usually does as we approach sunrise and just after that. And yeah, these temperatures are well up in the low to mid 70s about 
uh, three, four, five degrees above their respective normals. Molds on the high side as well. We are going to keep a lot of humidity around throughout the day, so that 90 degrees is going to feel more like about mid 90s. One or two of those showers may pop up again this afternoon, kind of like yesterday. They were few and far between, but if you got underneath one of them, they dumped a fair amount of rain very quickly. Those kind of tropical downpours and then really after today, it's just going to be sunshine and getting hotter. We're going to be in the mid to upper 90s uh, really tomorrow through uh, into the weekend. And then it looks like first of next week got our good chance at some triple digit temperatures around here. More on the weekend forecast and the very latest on tropical storm Cristobal down there in the southern Gulf of Mexico. Sarah, Mark. Thank you, Mike. San Antonio police say they did what they had to do. They fired projectiles a group of protesters in Alamo Plaza late last night. Katrina Weber is at Alamo Plaza now with a live report. Katrina, we've seen images all over social media, including some from members of the media who were also hit by those projectiles. What are police saying about it? Now, they sent out a tweet saying basically that they were not aiming for any members of the media, that these projectiles can ricochet off the ground. Now, either way, there are some people who say that they have a problem with them being used at all. The mayor also says he wants some answers. Our Sky 12 was overhead last night when all of this happened around 11 o'clock. There was a group gathered at Alamo Plaza protesting after a curfew for the, for the area had gone into effect. Our video shows as those people suddenly began running away. Police say they did fire at the crowd with pepper spray, gas, and rubber and wooden balls. In a tweet that they sent to the media, SAPD says officers were trying to break up an unruly crowd and that the media were not the targets. Others on social media disagree, saying that the protest was peaceful. In a tweet of his own, Mayor Ron Nirenberg responded to someone else saying that he was not okay with this and that he is looking for more information on those projectiles. Last night marked the fourth night that people here have protested. This is in response to the killing of George Floyd by Minneapolis police, as well as other issues having to do with racial injustice. The city, in response, did issue a curfew for this area. That is in effect from 8.30 p.m. until 6 a.m. all the rest of this week. Reporting live at Alamo Plaza, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Okay, Katrina, thank you. Meanwhile, around the nation, another night of protests. Thousands of people demanding justice for George Floyd. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump faces backlash over his handling of the crisis. ABC's Ines Ilocotera has the latest. Good morning. For more than a week now, demonstrators have been calling for the three remaining officers involved in Floyd's death to be arrested and charged. Overnight, the nation seeing a fresh wave of protests, thousands from coast to coast peacefully making their voices heard. But in some parts, things once again taking a violent turn. We're both angry. We're just expressing it in different ways. And people will say it's hijacking, but at the same time, it's clear everybody's angry. Near Boston, groups throwing fireworks and water bottles at officers. In New York City, protesters defying the 8 p.m. curfew. Streets in the city's Soho section closed after luxury stores like Chanel and Gucci were vandalized in recent nights. And in Washington, this stunning image, members of the National Guard lining the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. President Trump, meanwhile, now facing backlash from church leaders after he used government forces to remove peaceful protesters from a park so he could be photographed outside a historic church. And the president's 2020 opponent piling on. A country is crying out for leadership. Leadership that can recognize pain and deep grief of communities that have had a knee on their neck for a long time. And Biden is now calling on Congress to ban chokeholds, and he's vowing to establish a National Police Oversight Commission if elected. And as Delacuatera, ABC News, Washington. Former President Barack Obama will address the recent protest against police violence today. The former president will participate in the My Brother's Keeper Alliance town hall series. He will be joined by police reform activists and public figures, including his former attorney general, Eric Holder. This will be President Obama's first on-camera comment since the death of George, George Floyd sparked nationwide protest. It will take place at 4 this afternoon, San Antonio time. A local activist is talking about changes that need to happen following those protests all around the country and including here in San Antonio. 
Kamaya Factory helped organize a peaceful protest that took place at Travis Park last Saturday afternoon. It was one of ten, many of taking place following the death of George Floyd. In a recently published article, former President Barack Obama addressed the protests happening. He wrote about the importance of voting and participating in politics, and Kamaya agrees. The way to make sure that our police and our mayor and our systems look the way that we want them to um, is to vote um, and to reflect the representation of the people. That local activist says she wants to continue to bring awareness to these issues. Extraordinary times. That was the description Mayor Ron Nirenberg used to begin his State of the, State of the City speech last night. The mayor's nearly 20-minute speech focused heavily on the COVID-19 pandemic. Nirenberg said the city is ready for a second wave. He also spoke about the city council's upcoming vote on a $191 million recovery and resiliency plan. It will include money for job training, rent assistance, small business grants, and internet access for students. COVID is a tragedy, but the pandemic can be an agent of monumental change if we use it as a catalyst to solve the challenges that have hindered our ability to reach the next level. The mayor also spoke briefly about the ongoing protests in the city. He drew a distinction between what he called legitimate marches for justice and unfortunate violence by opportunists. Well, this morning, the Republican Party is set to move its national convention out of Charlotte, North Carolina. President Donald Trump tweeted he's pulling the convention from Charlotte, but the party has uh, has to back it first. Party leaders say if a deal's not reached with the state's Democratic Governor Roy Cooper by today, they will definitely seek another venue. The president and other prominent Republicans disagree with Governor Cooper's insistence on following social distancing guidelines requiring masks at large gatherings during the pandemic. Joe Biden is now less than 100 delegate votes away from having a majority in the Democratic Party. Biden has 1,003 delegates and needs 1,091 to have a majority. Seven states voted in a primary election yesterday. Biden can reach the necessary delegate count this week when Georgia and West Virginia hold their primaries. Biden has been the presumptive presidential nominee for the Democratic Party after all other challengers dropped out of the race. In your morning consumer headlines, car makers now being hit by a slowdown in the tourism industry. Without travelers, rental car companies are canceling orders for new vehicles. Reuters says car makers could lose at least 12% of sales this year because of big cuts by those rental car companies and not expanding their fleets. Google is now facing a $5 billion lawsuit. The company is accused of illegally invading the privacy of millions of people. According to the lawsuit, Google's Chrome browser still collects some information on users' web browsing habits, even when in a private mode. Google says every time you open an incognito window, there is a warning that information may be collected. Just about 640, 74 degrees. After the break, we'll show you how to hit the water and go fishing this weekend for free. Six forty three KSAC community partnering with San Antonio Food Bank and our wish list Wednesday initiative. Today you can donate to the Spurs Cafe Spurs Give Together Fund. The initiative helps local restaurants prepare meals for those in need and get local restaurants business during the pandemic. To donate, head to KSAT.com and search for Wishlist Wednesday. There is a link to donate to Spurs Cafe. Every dollar can help give to up to seven meals because of matching donations. Well, when you go fishing anywhere in Texas, it normally requires a fishing license. But this Saturday, Texas will celebrate Free Fishing Day. Texas will be able to fish on any public body of water across the state. This can be especially good for anyone new to fishing because it allows them to experience it without having to pay. Usually a fishing license could cost between 11 and $47, depending on how long it's good for and what type of water you are fishing in, fresh or salt or both. Money from license fees sports Texas Parks and Wildlife's conservation efforts like fish stocking. And you can learn about free fishing day by watching Fishing 101 videos for first timers and find resources to encourage you to get outdoors right now on ksat.com. And Mark is our expert resident fisherman. He has bought three boxes. I said, hey, bring some, some, you know, 
all my lures down there? Yeah, three yeah. boxes. I'm sure you have way more at home. I do, and I'm not an expert, by, but I do love it. It's one of the things I love to do on the weekend. And some of the areas that people can try out this weekend, you know, I always recommend the Guadalupe River has some great spots. Just make sure you respect, respect private property. Medina Lake, Canyon Lake. Also, they stocked Woodlawn Lake yesterday yeah. with thousands of largemouth bass. That's a good place bass. for uh, first timers to go. It will be, especially in about five years when those fingerling bass get a little bit bigger. You just, if you catch them, I tend to release them because I want somebody else, to, I want them to have the chance to grow and get bigger one day. But these are, you know, this is kind of an old school lure. This is a good old fashioned spinner bait. And I put a white uh, rubber trailer on there right now to give it a little bit more action. But these work near the surface of the water, pretty much tangle free. Also, these little plastic worms work really well. And I've rigged this what we call wacky style. And what happens is, as it gets on the bottom, it just has, has a lot of action. And that's what you're trying, especially down closer to the bottom. You're trying to get their attention with these little rubber worms. But all this stuff's fairly inexpensive. I love the little froggy. Yeah, and here's a little so froggy. Cute. And he swims on the surface of the water. I was telling you earlier, and you didn't really, you were like, really? Bass are predators. They go after almost anything swimming on the surface. I can't believe they eat frogs. They do. They, and they, you said baby dogs. Baby birds. They go after just about anything. They're like kind of the great white sharks of the fresh mm. water world, but don't spend a lot of money on it. Go out and get yourself a basic fishing rod. Go out and, you know, throw some of this stuff. Just the key thing is having fun and respect private property. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Learned so much this morning. <laughs> Are we going to learn anything about traffic? Anything going on out there, Officer Trujillo? Well, sir, we did manage to clear up that accident. I-10 westbound lanes right over Bernie Sage Road. So that's the great news. Take a look here. Visibility still pretty good down here at the street level, but uh, looks like they could be in jeopardy. We'll check with Mike in just a minute, but 410 at Austin Highway, you can see uh, more than enough room out there. No problems there. I-10 and Callahan, both the eastbound and the westbound lanes have more than enough room. And then look at the interchange there. I-10, 410 also just not looking too great. There's the downtown vicinity, the downtown skyline, not looking too invite. Doesn't look too inviting right now. But the humidity out there. So. The good news is there's no accidents at this point on the highways. Quick question. Back to fishing. Yes. yes. Bobber. Oh, for for live bait, I tend to use these artificial lures. Oh, okay. Live bait, a lot of it works. You know, worms or minnows, things like that. But the problem with live bait is you got to keep it alive. Worms got to stay cold, yeah. and fish got to stay alive to, okay. to be the stinky. Because they won't eat a dead fish, right? I mean, well, uh, it, it depends. Okay. It really depends on the fish. But I tend to lean towards these because they're so durable overall. I just always think about that when I was a little kid at my grandparents' house, yeah. the pond in their backyard. Hey, you know what? Nothing like on. that. Nothing like um, getting out there with a bobber and a, and a worm on the end of the hook and, and just seeing what's going to bite. And take the phone and put it somewhere else and just yes. throw it away. Oh. Just enjoy. So. But you gotta have something for the pictures when you for the fish story. That's also true. Hey, uh, looking outside right now, and uh, like Marcus was talking about, it is definitely humid, murky out there. I mean, even though the sun has come up, Randolph has dropped down to one mile visibility as of right now. So the fog is definitely invading, if you will. Uh, Beeville's down to zero again. Gonzalez has dropped down as well. So we will continue to deal with this fog for uh, the next while throughout the rest of the morning commute, basically low to mid seventies. Temperatures are about four or five degrees above normal. A lot of humidity. When you see these numbers, dew points, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. That's how we figure out relative humidity. And when these numbers are up in the seventies, yep, it's darn humid out there and it's going to be sticking around because we have heat index readings. The forecast later on today, mid and upper nineties and Excuse my grammar, but you ain't seen nothing yet because we're going to be very hot and very humid going into the next few days. We're going to progressively heat up each and every day. A couple of showers are possible, you know, like yesterday. There'll be one or two of them popping up. And if you get under one of these, you know, you could look off in the distance. And yesterday didn't have any rain on top of you, but, you know, then there was that column of rain over there. And that can dump some pretty good rain. These tropical showers that pop up in the afternoon, then they're going to be dying down later on tonight. Maybe one or two of them primarily along the coastal plain. That'll be... Uh, the the default, if you will, that there may be one or two showers along the coastal plain the next uh, couple of days. So down in the Gulf of Mexico yesterday at this time, it was still a tropical depression. Now it is tropical storm Cristobal and it's uh, just kind of lingering there and actually sort of spinning around a little bit and it will probably lose some strength. Notice how it goes from the tropical storm symbol to the low right there. And this is uh, tomorrow as it moves onshore on the Yucatan. 
We're going to be dumping a ton of rain there, obviously, and then it'll move back into the Gulf of Mexico, regain strength once it's in this bath water, basically out there in the Gulf, very warm, and that's what these uh, tropical systems do feed off of. Now, as far as the projection from the Hurricane Center, latest computer models have it uh, right about New Orleans. This is going to be the wet side of it, the right-hand side of it. We're going to be on the, the dry side, if you will. Obviously, we'll have some clouds from this, but the problem is on the left hand side of the circulation, that's where the air tends to sink a little bit more and that is going to help us to heat up actually with the path where it is right now. 83 degrees at noon, partly cloudy skies and then high temperature today getting up to 90, but add to that good five degrees on average with the heat index. A couple of scattered showers out there with some of those heftier downpours. 92 tomorrow, 94 Friday, mid upper 90s over the weekend. It's going to be a scorcher out there. So if you're going fishing this weekend or doing anything, sunscreen, lots of it, lots of water as well, especially if you're near the water because you get that reflection and that'll just cook you. But then we're looking at triple digits by the first of the week. Yeah, you got to continually reapply. Trust me. Yep. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> right now it's 650, 74 degrees. It is so easy to maintain a good habit and can feel like it's impossible at times to keep up with a good one. Tomorrow on GMSA, where we look at ways to stay committed to some good habits. And taking a look outside at live cam, like Mike was saying, it looks a little muggy out there, maybe even foggy. We'll tell you about it when we come back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the nationwide protest. Tens of thousands peacefully demonstrating 60,000 honoring George Floyd in his hometown of Houston. Those demonstrations went into the night and many broke curfew. So this morning, there's some fallout from that and, of course, some fallout from President Trump's photo op in front of that church after clearing the peaceful protesters from outside the White House. You'll see it here coming up on GMA. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nierberg wants some answers after reports police used projectiles on protesters and members of the media at Alamo Plaza last night. This was the fourth night of protesting here against the killing of George Floyd by Minneapolis police as well as racial inequality. The group was there around 11 last night while there was a curfew in effect for Alamo Plaza. According to people on social media, police fired on them as they were protesting peacefully. Several members of the media were also hit. In a tweet, San Antonio police say they used the projectiles to break up an unruly crowd. They said the media was not a target. In a tweet of his own, Mayor Ron Nirenberg responded to someone saying he was not okay with this and that he is looking for more information on the projectiles. City ordered a curfew for Alamo Plaza from 8.30 p.m. through 6 a.m. for the rest of the week. A family escaping a war-torn country in Africa ends up here in San Antonio. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. In today's Great Graduate segment, I'm going to introduce you to Eric, whose mission is now to help his community. Five minutes till seven. How's the traffic out there? Off so far, studio? well, so far still looking pretty good uh, at ground level. You can see east and westbound lanes of I-10 there at Frio, no problems. 1604 tradesmen looking pretty good. And there's I-10 at Ralph Fair Road. Now that the construction as well as the uh, accidents cleared up, we have no issues out there. Mike? Looks pretty good out there on the far northwest side, but you get on the east side, and this is a downtown camera, and uh, boy, you can see that it's murky out there, especially, I mean, Stinson has dropped down. It's now just a mile and two-thirds visibility at Randolph. That actually improved, and then New Braunfels has dropped down to just a half-mile visibility. Temperatures are in the 70s right now. We will make it up into the 90-degree uh, range. It'll feel hotter than that. One or two of those scattered uh, showers or storms later on this afternoon. Mike, Marcus, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Well, that's, excuse that's me. Open now. <laughs> Sorry. We'll see you back here for GMSA we'll 9 from everybody here at Good Morning San Antonio and including Sarah Costa.